Welcome back to Be The Authority. In today's episode, we're going to be covering about what it really means to run and to own a business, specifically for solopreneurs. How do you get out of your head? How do you make your first 10K per month? And how do you actually generate your skills into income? I have Creator Craig joining me on the show. Thank you so much for being a guest. Thanks so much for having me. Super excited to be talking with you today. Amazing. So for anyone who hasn't come across your content, Craig, tell us a little bit more about who you are and, and why you're doing what you're doing. So my name's Craig Chavis, AKA Creative Craig, and I'm currently branding myself as an executive coach that helps solopreneurs to escape the hustle and go from chaos to cash flow. And what I mean by that is I really help people transform their jobs into a business, which is a system that consistently creates tangible customer value. And by creating that system that creates tangible customer value, people will consistently pay for that. Hence, you're no longer hustling anymore. Now you have something that's working for you and you have access to not only financial freedom, but most importantly, time freedom as well. Because what we all should know is that time is gold and money is silver. And there's nothing worse than creating a business that you are a slave to. So I help people to avoid that problem. I love that. And it is something that's pretty common, right? So you start a business, you see it being seen as this exciting and amazing thing on Instagram that's going to open up all these opportunities. But really, when it comes down to it, it's, it's hard work. And it means you have to do things differently. So what's some of the biggest mistakes that you see entrepreneurs doing at their start and how can they overcome them? Well, it's interesting you mentioned that because I just wrote an article called The Friction of Truth. And it talks about how the idea of entrepreneurship is way different than the reality of entrepreneurship. And that dissonance is what creates a, a friction where people are like, wow, I thought it was a lot easier than, I mean, I thought it was a lot easier than what it really is. But business is simple and it's not easy. Um, but to answer your question more directly, the one of the biggest problems new entrepreneurs or solopreneurs have is they try to market something that they haven't even built yet. Because everybody thinks that after I get into business, all I need to do is get more leads, more customers, et cetera, et cetera. But the last thing you want to do is bring attention to a business that is dysfunctionally functional. Because marketing is nothing but an amplifier. It's all about attention. So when you bring attention to something that doesn't work, nothing's going to work. So you have to first build something that works, and then you can go out in the world and market people to that thing that you now have as a business. Mm. And I think it's really powerful, right? Because when you're going out on your own, you've got to make a mark. You've got to be bold, but you've got to have the operational side as well to keep your clients happy. And one of the things I found and kind of relevant to the show is the impact of a personal brand in terms of you can have the best back end, you can have the best product, but if no one knows who you are, no one trusts you, then why would they want to work with you? So how important would you say that is to starting off? It's extremely important. Um, but as we were kind of talking before the, the podcast, I was saying that um, the trust factor is something that people struggle to develop because they think it's no like trust. That's what we've all been told. But how are you going to know somebody, then get to like them and then trust them? Something's out of order. So what I've realized, it's actually like no trust. I, I need to create a great impression. I need people to like me. And after people like me, they'll invest time to getting to know me. And then once they get to know me, then they'll trust me. And then that resistance to not wanting to work with me then dissipates. So it's super, super important that you build that trust factor, but there's a process to going about that. And you have to get people to like you, first of all, and that's your foot in the door to then build the no track, the no factor, the trust factor, then ultimately build a brand that people resonate with. Mm, and, and how would you say that you can start to build trust with your community? Well, you have to be vulnerable. And one of the first ways I created trust with my community was writing my own entrepreneurial memoirs about my successes and failures in business. And by letting people know that, hey, I've been through what you're going through or what you will go through, 
um, I can empathize with you because I have the same experiences. Uh, we all have the same experiences. So when you can relate to people and not talk to people, but talk with them, um, that really builds up that connection and builds that bond that gets people to trust your brand. Mm, and that's really powerful, right? Talking with them because no one wants to get told something. We are naturally born to reject it from our parents, from our teachers, because we don't want it. We don't want to listen. So how do you talk with someone rather than at or to them? Well, it's understanding where people are. Um, you know, like I said, when we first started this conversation, I branded myself as an executive coach. And a coach is really a Sherpa. And a Sherpa is, help, is someone who helps people to climb mountains. Well, that mountain really is your, your business goal, your financial goal. Mm -hmm. um, where so many coaches struggle is that they're too busy chilling on the mountaintop, screaming down at people, saying, hey, I'm here, come up to meet me. Um, and if you get here, good luck. But what I do is I go down and I meet people where they are. I meet them at base camp. And then I tell them, I say, hey, you know, I can help you get to where you want to go. It's going to require work, but I can help you to carry that load and carry that burden and help you to figure out a path that's going to help you to accomplish your goals. So when you meet people where they are and you've actually experienced where they are, there's just an, a super powerful connection that immediately arises and it's natural. And it's something that can be done simply, but you have to make an effort to go meet your customers where they are. So you're not talking to them, you're with them where they're at in that moment. And I think that's really powerful, right? Because someone, they, they want to feel heard. They want to feel understood. So what makes your coaching different to other business coaches that you've seen? And, and how do you differentiate yourself? Me, so I talk to people in a language that's not only simple, but it's based upon principles mm -hmm. and not techniques. See, a lot of coaches are telling people, hey, I have this secret formula or this done for you process, follow my way or take the highway. But that's not how business works. Like we could be doing the same exact thing, but we're going to have different results. We're going to have different mm -hmm. paths just so, because of the way we show up in the world. So by teaching people that, hey, there's certain fundamentals that you have to go through as an entrepreneur founder market fit, language market fit, product market fit, systems market fit. You're gonna to have to go through those four stages. But as you go through those four stages, you're gonna figure out what works for you and what doesn't. So a simple analogy is like the difference between nutrition and dieting. Nutrition is a principle. The amount of quality, the, the quality and the quantity of calories you intake are gonna help you to gain or lose weight. Nobody can avoid that. But whether or not you're a vegan, a pescatarian, um, paleo, or for me, I'm lactose intolerant, that depends on my body and what I'm built to intake, right? So yeah. I give people business nutrition, business principles, and then they figure out their diet and their special sauce and their techniques as they go along the way. Because we both know you learn while doing, by doing. So it's me helping people to solve problems that pop up when they arise. And I don't sell people, I help people to solve their problems. So that's what makes me different. Mm, and I love that, right? Because you're teaching the fundamental principles. So if that same situation happens, but it happens something similar, but different, they have the understanding to really be able to, to solve that. Now, one other aspect I found that you started to do, and which I love to encourage is YouTube. Mm -hmm and creating that long-term community but also the longer form content so people can really understand who you are and they can understand why potentially they, they'd want to work with you so how important would you say using something like youtube is to build that long-term community i think it's very important i mean just having not only just long form content short form content but content that's searchable and it's it's evergreen and people can just randomly discover it. And when you create your YouTube channel the right way, which I'm still learning, I'm not a YouTube expert, you know, people can binge watch your content. And then if you build a right funnel, you could funnel people from a video to your landing page or to your offer. So I think YouTube is a, an amazing short-term and long-term strategy for anybody who's a, um, a content creator or anybody who has an online business and uh, it'll be very beneficial for you. Mm, I love that. And and to finish off, if somebody was like, okay, 
Craig, I want to take action. I want to level up what I'm doing, but I don't know where I'm going wrong. What advice would you give them to really figure out the core of why they're just not where they think they should be? So people talk about one of Simon Sinek's famous talks. He says, start with why. Because he says, when you figure out why you're doing what you're doing, this is going to unlock you know, your next best steps. Well, I say Simon Sinek is terribly wrong. Because how can you figure out why you're doing if you don't know who you really are? So you really have to begin, to begin, you have to look within. So you have to figure out who you are and who you are not. And only after you get a clear understanding of that, then you can start to figure out why you do what you do. And it starts with self. And once you really understand yourself, then your next best steps will be revealed. But it's very, very mm -hmm. introspective. And you have to ask yourself the right questions to get the right answers. I love that. Creative Craig, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Now, I know for a fact some audience members are going to think, mm -hmm. you know what? That sounds like me. Where is the best place for them to get in contact with you and to learn more about what you do and the value that you're providing? Mm -hmm. So there's two places. Um, both are websites. So the first one is my personal website, which is creativecraig.com. But you spell that a little bit differently. It's www.cre, the number eight, I-V-E, C-R-A-I-G dot com. Or you could follow me on Instagram backslash at creative Craig, the same way my website's spelled too. Amazing. Well, Craig, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us on Be The Authority. Thanks for having me on as well. Appreciate it, Sabrina.